I'm here in Las Vegas. We are at ClickWorld 2023. I have the pleasure of being joined by Brandon Grady. Brandon, great to see you. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. Yeah, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Now, firstly, congratulations on an amazing event. Um, lots of really rigged news, but I, I wanted to just touch on a few key points that I know my audience are really, really keen to learn more about with regard to your unique lens on it, with regard to your role and the mm -hmm. business unit you're in. Um, I, I wonder if we could maybe just start with a 30,000 foot view uh, uh, with regard to sort of the overall uh, cloud strategy, uh, cloud first strategy that Click has. When you describe that at board level, how, how do you paraphrase that? Because it's a very big, heady topic to consider, like in, in speed dating format, how, how do you convey that? Because there's a lot to be conveyed in that. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's where the market's headed, right? Uh, the market's there, but the market's all is continues to head down that path. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a choice, right? We have a choice as a company is we either go along the path and go where our customers are going, or we remain where we are. Right. Um, and that's just not a good option for us. And it's actually a bad option for our customers if we don't go with them. Sure. And, you know, and, and I guess it's fair to say that, you know, you've had a, a, a long, uh, track record proven pedigree of success in the on-premises space. You've certainly yeah. performed amazingly in the data center space of outsourced yeah. hosting environments. And this is a natural step and then the hybrid version of multi-cloud, public, private, and, and, and people may have stuff coming back into private clouds internally. Um, but I guess to that point, just to reiterate, when you're talking about cloud first, you're really going to customers, I, I guess, and tell me if I'm wrong, and that is the preference is offering the entire suite in the cloud, mm -hmm. bringing the data into a trusted cloud environment, totally. and then I guess, people benefit and in many ways when we think about like the hypervisors if i'm a small business or a medium-sized business i might have one cybersecurity expert the aws as well might have four thousand right and i imagine okay. that that's a similar thing where you're talking about when you talk about clicks cloud first strategy it's like you've got an enormous team that can bring that strength to the table for an organization is that a fair summary it's absolutely perfect summary and i actually talked to a, a customer last night on this exact topic he, okay. he was uh he was the head of security for his company and i said right. that's great how big was your team and he said, you're looking at me. Um, and so it was, it was it, and I said, interesting. And he said, yeah, there. but we're not, I don't want to move to the cloud because I'm super nervous. And I said, oh, really? I said, we've got hundreds of people that are thinking about this all, all day, every single day. Yeah. What if we could let you sleep at night a little bit better? So for him, it was a perception of security issues. Okay. And really he, after about a 10 minute conversation, he said, this may make sense. Yeah, this yeah. may be the right thing for me, but I, th I think you know it's a, it's a perfect summary. Yeah, it's yeah, no, super brilliant. Yeah. And, and in many ways, like the ability to allay those fears uh, from your organization point of view must be rewarding because you you can sort of see them moving from, you know, a, a focus around data protection, data locality, cybersecurity risk to then going back to their core business and not necessarily trying to be a cybersecurity specialist, a data specialist, but actually then go back to whether they're transport, retail, whatever they might be, um, but that's their core business. They can focus on it and leverage your strengths. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the one of the things is if you if you eliminate the infrastructure, right, you eliminate yep. the time you're spending about the infrastructure, the security, everything that goes around with that, yep. you can actually spend time analyzing the, inf the data you have and finding the nuggets of information that are going to help you change your business. Yep. Um, that time savings in and of itself is, is enough of a return on investment for people that they, they, they want to do it. Uh, you know, I've been in the analytics space for almost 20 years now, and I, I, I go back to sort of that data science yep. uh, piece where 80% of the data scientist time is spent on data preparation right. and finding yep. out which yep. algorithms to use. If you can change that paradigm, yeah, yeah. That allows the data scientists to actually have business impact and, and do their job. And do their job. Yeah, right? That's yeah. really the real thing that we're seeing. And, and a much more rewarding job as well, because like nobody wants to just sit there and clean up CSV and parquet files. Well, some people do. <laughs> right? so some people do. So. Um, when you talk about this, and particularly the the um, power to unlock value, you talk about things like transforming raw data into actionable decision intelligence. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's been this phrase of data driven. Um, decision making for yep. a long time. Um, just just touch on that briefly, kind of you know what what you're seeing with regard to your customers' response when you talk about this approach to using cloud-based solutions to unlock what's in their raw data and convert that into things that they can actually go away and use intelligence found in the data to actually have actionable takeaways yeah, and I mean, insights. Click obviously obviously has a point of view on this, right? Yeah. But, um, the point of view I actually like to share is, is a customer story, right? Okay. It's way better than us yeah, giving yeah. our opinion. Um, so we have a we have a large retailer customer here based in the U.S. Um, they decided that they were going to be cloud first. They were going to move a lot of their data to the cloud. They were going to put it in one of the cloud data warehouses. Um, and they said, you know what? We need a way to answer questions that we didn't know we didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Which, 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 <laughs> the which, Donald Rumsfeld. Which, which is, <laughs> yeah, a little bit that. But it, it was an interesting way of looking at it. And they actually needed to figure out, it's like, where don't we have inventory? Right. Yep. 
So by moving to the cloud and using putting Click on top of that data in this data warehouse, they did a couple things, right? One, uh, they reduced some of their spend on this cloud data warehouse because of our architecture. That was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, second thing that they were able to do is they were able to find on Black Friday an additional five million dollars in revenue that they had oh never seen before. That's very um, non-trivial. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and you consider what they were paying for us. I, I realized, wow, yep. that's that's a rather um, big impact. And so. This customer is really big into uh, sustainability. They're really big into ph philanthropy. And so aligning with us and our view on that too, it was a really nice marriage of the two companies. And it was just, it's a, it's a really nice story. Um, to hear how we impacted yeah, those yeah. customers. So. And, and when you go to a CFO with that kind of business case, uh, the, 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 tick, the cost of the ticket to ride never comes in the conversation. Short, it's like, can short, you short combo. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. just, can you please repeat that process, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and, I, and I guess that's where, you know, if we circle back into that, when, when you're talking about a couple of key things there, just to reiterate, you know, one of the things we see when we're on premises, a lot of people don't know the fully burdened cost of their infrastructure, but when they put it in the cloud, they think it's costing 40% more, and you know, well, actually, that's all the hidden cost you didn't know. Mm -hmm. But in many ways, when I'm listening to a lot of the stuff you've talked about this week um, in various talks and presentations seen from Click and, and the team around you, is that you, you, know, you end up cutting costs by migrating to the cloud because now you know what 100% of the costs are, you know where your costs are, and as you said, you can then go find those gaps, and then often when you find the gaps, you find ways to make money, as you said. Yep. And, that, and I guess you also spoke, spoke to something that I'd love for you to sort of just briefly expand on, those, the predictability of those costs, and then manage the costs within that budget so that you're not looking in arrears going, what about cloud costs this last month, will it cost that again? Mm -hmm. Those conversations, how do they run? When, you, when you're talking to customers about that, and how do you convey that, and what's their take on kind of the ability to predict going forward based uh, on what you already know. Absolutely, look, there's there are a lot of cloud vendors out there that are hyperscalers or yep. in all those. And we have heard multiple stories from our customers where they say, look, we, we got a bill. Uh, right. We didn't want that bill, we weren't expecting that yeah, bill, yeah. Um, blew my budget out of the water. So as we are thinking about our cloud and, and the economic model for both us and for the customer, one of the things that we're really focusing on is ensuring that our customers have that predictability mm -hmm. in that pricing model. And we're, yep. we're moving to a packaging and a pricing that will not be, be based on minutes and usage and consumption, but rather just pure, how much data do you have? Yeah. And how much is it going to grow? And yep. that's going to allow the customers to really get a good sense. It's no different than, your, than either your Android or your iOS device where hey, I'm going to take some pictures, mm -hmm. I'm going to read mm -hmm. some emails, how much data is going to go on yep. that phone? That's why you buy the 512, not the 128, yeah, right? Yeah, or yeah. the terabyte, yeah. whatever it may be, so. Well, in many cases, I just buy the bigger one because I have no clue what I'm going to use, right? Whereas, if, if I'm smart and I look at my usage for the last 18 months, I know exactly how much I'm using, I just, I didn't take the time to do that. So, I, we have a camera in front of us, obviously, I'm a big photographer. Yep. Um, I use OneDrive, I store everything yep. in OneDrive. Yep. Um, I'm not on the low tier. I bought the <laughs> highest tier because guess what? I'm going to take pictures. Yep. We're seeing this from an analytics and data movement perspective. Our customers are really thinking about that the same way. Yep. And as, as our customers think about this, think about your growth, right? Think about where you're headed. Think about how much data you're, mm -hmm. you're going, data, data, wow. Yeah, yeah. That was my Boston accent coming out, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. How much data you are, are, are going to have and, and how much value you're going to get out of that. Make sure that's predictable. And I, I imagine as well, you know, you talked about giving some comfort to customers with regard to, you know, whether it's data management, data compliance, and security in particular, and their ability to go to sleep. Um, you know, if they have a new project coming out and they can cloud burst into your infrastructure, they don't have to do anything to just be able to consume more of it. You know, if they want to put another couple hundred terabytes in there, you sort that out. They, they, it, yep. they just switch it on, right? And, yep, they, and obviously they pay for it, but yep. you know, they know what the costs are going to be. They can plan that. And similarly, if they're going to run large models for a period of time. Mm -hmm. You've, probably, you've already tested those models, you know what the costs are. If they Correct. tell you you're going to put a terabyte of data and run it 400 times, they can actually work out probably down to the cent what that's going well, to be. And also looking at that data, the, the data. Data is, is what people value, right? Yeah. It's it's not users. People don't, yeah. people don't put a dollar value on <laughs> users, but if they have a petabyte of data and they know they can find out some information from that. So what we're finding is our, our, our our customers want to just deploy analytics to everybody. Right. right? It's no longer something that you yeah, do, it's yeah. in everything you yeah. do. So we feel that by offering a, a package that will allow them to give analytics to every person in the organization, yeah. that's just going to make the customers more successful. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that democratization of all tools, right? Completely. Everyone got a laptop, everyone got a spreadsheet, they got a word processor, they got email, because it was a tool of trade. Now, Completely. these tools, your dashboards, the click platform, the ability to make smart decisions and see it in real time, rather than looking at what last month's reports are. I, I don't know how many times I've been in the boardroom and someone says, what's going to be like last month? And I've been looking at printed 
<laughs> like bounded copies yep. of, of last month's report. And like, I can't tell you, I can only tell you what happened last month. Um, we've spoken about a lot of things like cost optimization. Multi-cloud strategy is something that's on everyone's mind because they might have Office 365 for their automation mm -hmm. tools, they might yep. have AWS for their virtual mm -hmm. machines and some of their other workloads. Yep. Um, how often does this come up in, in discussion? And I know you've got Click Connector Factory where you can pull data from some of those, but that mm -hmm. must introduce a few complexities for you and your team with regard okay. to the Click Cloud integration. So it's, it's a, you asked me how often it comes up. Um, I was in a conversation right before this conversation. Guess what came up? Crack right. came up. Um, <laughs> it comes up in yeah. every single conversation. And so there was an article that Forbes did, uh, and I may misquote it a little bit here, but in general what they were paraphrasing. They, they were paraphrasing it, they said originally customers were picking a cloud vendor and living with it. Yep. And what they're finding now is that on average about 2.5 cloud vendors per customer into right, that right. Fortune 500 space. Um, it reminds me a little bit of 2007 all over again to date ourselves, okay. but the, all the CRM and ERP vendors, everyone was standardizing on one of them. Yep, yep. Then all of a sudden magically people had a mix of Salesforce or yeah, Siebel yeah. Or, or SAP. A classic shadow IT problem, right? Completely, and so what we're seeing in our area is we're actually we're actually seeing that as well, right? We had yep. customers that said, we are only ever going to run on Azure, we're only ever going to run on, on AWS or GCP or any mm -hmm. of those type. Mm -hmm. And now what we're finding is they're saying, hmm, guess we're probably going to have some data over here or over there. To your second question about the complexity, yes, it introduces complexity, but that's not a click-specific problem. No, of course. Right? However. But you've solved it. I, we have solved it. So however, here's the really interesting thing. So we have an upcoming pending acquisition um, do with, with talent that, uh, can't give more details around that, but it's really exciting times. That combined with our existing data integration yep. portfolio, giving the ability to customers to do some of those cloud to cloud mm -hmm. integrations mm -hmm. and really some of those data warehouse automation pieces, that's a special sauce for us. And that's yep. what we're going to do. We are not a cloud platform, so to speak. We're not one of the hyperscalers. Yep. So yep. we're going to remain independent and neutral on that, but we will help you make sure that as you go on your cloud journey and get more and more cloud into your infrastructure, and that may include your on-premises um, yeah. private cloud, right? Yeah, yeah. We will make sure that you can move that data, integrate that data, and analyze that data by, by respecting where your data is located. Yeah, a lot of people talk about the data pipeline. You just built a whole bunch of new plumbing in there that just works and doesn't leak, and I love that. And it's, it's it, you know, watching some of the demos today, yep. at the day two on stage stuff, and just watching, thinking, that's not recorded, he's doing that live. And then, of course, there was the delays with public Wi-Fi, I was like, it actually worked. I, I was thinking. Oh, it was live. It was I wouldn't. Live. I wouldn't want to be that person. But you know. But anyway. And and on the back of that, I guess you know we we, and you're no stranger to acquisitions, of course. Um, and you guys have probably wrote the book on it. But a lot of organisations going through acquisitions or being acquired, and then they have to end up with this sort of hybrid cloud challenge as well. Yeah. So now you've got a solution. I imagine whether you can go to them saying, well, if you've got data in two different organisations and multiple silos, different platforms we can actually solve that. That must be a bit of a eureka aha moment when oh, they go, it's, it's, really? It's, like, you it, can just fix it? it? It's, actually, it's actually phenomenal. Right? Yep. I mean, it's one of, one of Click's strengths, especially on the analytics side, has always been multiple data sources. Mm -hmm. right? That's something we do really, really well. We can go out, we can, we can access that data where it's located, and then bring it together in a centralized way mm -hmm. that allows customers to analyze that. So acquisitions is a great story. I mean, I've been through many myself here at Click, as well Indeed. as previous companies, and it, 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 it's not fun. It can be hugely challenging and <laughs> yeah. if we think about the board level, right? Costly. I'm only 42 years old, I've done two acquisitions, that's why I look like I'm 55. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, well, I'm only 20 and uh, look, this is what it looks like, but no, that's really, uh, it's, we, we can right. break something It there. can go really wrong, right? It can go really, really wrong and that in bringing yep. that data together, it, it you get duplication issues, yep. you get data yep. quality issues, you get, um, it can shut down a business if you don't do it right. Well, even HR, right? You've got two different companies, two different Completely. HR platforms. The thing I really like now, and I've seen a couple of demos on the floor today where I just looked and thought, I could immediately flag that into two HR environments. Yes, completely. And then have both HR teams walk around with one single source of truth, mm -hmm. you know, single pane of glass, as it were, yep. and actually stop fighting about whose data is in what database and just get on with Running the How business. many of these people do they need? How many people do they need accounts? Yeah, it's and, about, and, I mean, we know. talk a lot about this week that we use the word certainty, yep. right? That's been thrown around a lot yeah, here. Yeah. It will give you that level of certainty, that will give you that level of comfort, and it will, there, people are nervous about that when, you, when, when, when there have two different um, sets of stories. And I mean, you talked about the board level. It's not good when you walk in with two different stories. Yeah. It, it does never ends well for, for your C-level executives. For anybody. For anybody for that Either matter. the messenger so, and the yeah, person. exactly. <laughs> um, well, you know, there's so much we could talk forever on yeah. that, but I, I guess 
Could I maybe just get you to wrap us up on, and, and it's a very broad crystal ball style thing, but we've heard a lot of exciting announcements. You've shared a great deal of insights just now on kind of you know, where you're at, where you're going. But beyond the obvious that we've heard this week, I, I wonder if, you know, if just from you know, your point of view with your unique lens, with your role uh, within uh, Click, the next 12 to 18 months, what does that potentially shape up? Because we've got a really challenging global situation with geopolitical mm -hmm. issues, yep. supply chain issues, economic issues. Uh, beyond all of those obvious ones, I mean, you, you must have your finger on the pulse of a few things that you think that you could potentially share with people in so, the next 12 to 18 months. What does that yeah, potentially absolutely. look like? So as we, as we think about the cloud itself, there are a lot of product capabilities that we're yep. going to bring on. We talked about our auto ML capabilities, yep. product capabilities itself. But if we get down to the data itself, one of the one of the big trends that we're seeing is there's a lot of continuing concern around data sovereignty and mm -hmm. data privacy, yep. um, ensuring that that data is going to be secure. So we're investing very heavily in our cloud platform to make sure that we're providing the best possible infrastructure to those mm -hmm. customers that are concerned about that. Um, we believe that customers own their data, right? It is their data yep. and we respect that. So what we're seeing on our roadmap is really getting good at AWS and expanding where we're going to run. Okay. We will be adding regions, um, for example, in the UK, yep. Brexit obviously is Indeed. having an impact, yep. right? We're looking to add to UK, we're looking to add uh, in Germany, right? Because some yep. of their laws expanding into Asia Pacific with something that we're likely to do in Japan. And then on top of all of this, we're looking at taking advantage of some of AWS's great security protocols that they mm -hmm. put in place, things like private link and yeah, yeah. bring your own key and really just giving customers full control over where their data is. And we want to make sure that customers are comfortable with that. That's sort of where we, awesome. we see that headed. And then as you heard, the product roadmap for all the capabilities, it is it is deep, it's broad, yeah. it's going to be a really Mind exciting blowing. time. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you spoke about certainty and I think that, that summary you just gave us just spoke directly to that, that at the end of the day, the certainty we're looking for for the parts of the puzzle you can solve, you can you can actually give us that, and that, that's that's invaluable. Yeah, Brendan, so great to catch up with you. Thank you so much for making time. Congratulations on an amazing event. I cannot wait to, to do the next one. Yep. Um, and until then, safe travels, and we'll look forward to catching up again. Thank you very much, appreciate it. And you, thank you. Yep.